I think we're in. Welcome in, everybody, to another live edition. There we go. Sorry, some tech difficulties on our side. But we're back on Patriots Beat here on the CLNS Media Network. Uh, I am Mike Cadlick, and I am joined by 98.5 The Sports Hub's Alex Barth. Uh, we are here to talk schedule release. We are here to talk uh, Germany. We are here to talk some roster moves. Uh, and we're also here to take your questions and allow you guys to uh, dictate the conversation later on in the show. So uh, first and foremost, we are powered by FanDuel. So head over to FanDuel.com slash Boston, and you will get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. Uh, all you got to do is sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. You'll see it underneath us. Uh, one tip I guess I can give you is to not bet on the Celtics. Uh, we will we will get into a Boston sports minute later on about uh, those f- frauds as well. Um, but yeah, go to FanDuel.com slash Boston. Uh, $1,000 in bonus bets as a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Excuse me. So uh, head over there and do it. They uh, power the show. So uh, give them some love. So... We will start off, Alex, talking uh, Germany. So while the schedule uh, is fully released tomorrow night, and we will react to that on the show on Friday afternoon, uh, we did get a little bit of a preview as the NFL started to, you know, report on. Not, I don't want to call them leaks because they're they're real. Um, some of the, you know, the primetime games, the the premier games, and one of them is New England, the Patriots, and they will play in Germany, as you all know, this year. Uh, and it was announced that that will be week 10 on November 12th against the Indianapolis Colts. So fourth, first, fourth overall pick, Anthony Richardson, new head coach, Shane Steichen. Uh, Patriots got a taste of them in week 10 uh, in Germany. So what'd you, uh, what'd you make of that? I know it's, uh, I, I have a, one of my, one of my friends is a Colts fan. So he was all looking forward to the home game being at Gillette to go to that game. And now they, he, it's in Germany. So uh, a lot of different uh, opinions, but uh what do you think about uh, them playing over uh, in Germany against Indy? Yeah, I mean, against Indy, you know, you figured it was going to be one of the lower rent games on the schedule. The Colts, the Saints, uh, the Commanders. Sure. I'm more interested with the timing. So this is going to be week 10, mm-hmm. right? Now, in generally, you have a bye week the week after an international game. Maybe that changes this year. I don't know. But that's okay. generally how it's been. Um there have been some rumors that the Patriots could be playing on Thanksgiving again. They're at the Cowboys this year, and you look at who the Cowboys play, who they host, there's not a ton of options just based on the way the rest of the schedule looks. You're pretty much down to the Patriots, Seahawks, Rams, and Commanders. So maybe the Commanders grab that game, but if not, I'd say the Patriots have as strong a chance as anybody. Mm-hmm. It would kind of suck if they have to come back from an international trip, get the default buy, but then don't even get the buy full bye week because instead of you know getting the two weeks off, nope, you have your bye week and then you play on Thursday. And then a short week instead right. of on Sunday, right? Yeah. And then I, I don't know. So in the past, because every team has to play on Thursday night football at least once, the Thanksgiving games don't technically count as Thursday night football. So did they I think they changed that this year. I so think they they were very vague in the way they worded it. Okay. Um what they'd said was basically so in the past the rule was teams could only have one short week you could okay. only have one sunday to thursday that was it um and now teams can have two okay but there's some questions there does coming off a bye week still count as a short week right with sunday instead of being game day being an off day does that count as a short week right. and then does the thanksgiving game count as a short week. Cause that's why the Patriots played that back to back Thursday last year, Thanksgiving. And then the next week they had to play on Thursday night football, but they were playing on Thanksgiving. So they went Thursday to Thursday. So they technically only had one short week, which was the week leading up to Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, I mean, look, I don't know. Maybe they don't play on Thanksgiving, but like last year's schedule, I thought down the stretch was brutal just in the way everything was shook up and the inability to build a a routine, you know, I think they went, I remember correctly, it was Thursday, Thursday, Sunday, Saturday, Monday, or something like that. And there was a Monday in there as well. Mm -hmm. Can't, it can't have that. It's just BS. And look, I get the cards fall a certain way every once in a while. And and not every team's going to have an ideal schedule, but to essentially give them that ending two years in a row yeah, would be absurd. Would yeah. And I hope the league knows better than that. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, they also had, I think the, the Raiders game was a Sunday night, and so I know that that's a little different, but you still get in late the next day if you're on a Sunday night football. They were that, scheduled to have four primetime games in a row. Now, the Raiders game ended up getting flexed out, but they were scheduled to have four primetime oh, games in a row, including right. okay. two Thursday games. It's absurd. It's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to ask. Yeah. So are they going to be able to contain Anthony Richardson in Germany? That's the question. We'll find out. I mean, we're so far away from knowing what that Colts team is going to look like. Yeah, new coach, new quarterback. They're going to draw a whole new thing up. But, it's, it, I, I, you know, one way or the other, I was looking forward to watching Anthony Richardson this season. The fact it's yeah. later on in the year means there's a better chance he's the starter. Like, look, maybe I think there's a real chance the Colts don't start him, right? And and they go with, I believe it's, is it still Nick Foles? No, they cut him. They cut Foles. Uh, it's one? Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. So, I think there's a real chance Gardner Minshew, you know, starts the season and, and they yeah. go to Richardson when he's ready. Um, so, you know, you play the Colts first three, four weeks of the year. Maybe you don't get to see Anthony Richardson. Maybe it's like that True. thing last year where, you know, teams kept making quarterback and coaching changes the week after playing the Patriots. Uh, right. By week 10, I think we should see he Anthony should Richardson. So it'll be, it'll be cool to get to watch him. Yeah, it will be. So uh, we will get the full schedule tomorrow night and uh, me and Alex will be back on the show. Uh, Saturday or Friday, excuse me, Friday, Friday afternoon. No so, Saturday so, show this week. No, done no. with those. Not the draft <laughs> yes. anymore. Yeah, Friday, uh, Friday afternoon to I react will be on to, the beach. There you go. The full schedule. Oh, away on the beach or local on the beach? Local. There you go. All right. Um, so that's that. Uh, reacting to the schedule Friday. Um, some other roster news before we let you guys steer the ship here and get to Q and A. Um, over the last couple of days, the Patriots have signed defensive back Tay Hayes, and they have released wide receiver, athlete, uh, Lynn Bowden. So after the draft, Patriots brought in uh, several wide receivers in Keishon Butte, Demario Douglas, uh, added to their defensive backfield with obviously Christian Gonzalez. And if you want to call it Marte Mapu, even though he's feels like he's slated to play more, a uh, little bit of linebacker, but or, yeah, so, uh, but they bring in Tay Hayes and they cut Lynn Bowden. So I think they now have six roster wide receivers, and uh, they have plenty of defensive backs. So what did you make of those moves sort of coming in uh, back and forth against each other and what they mean, I guess, for each other and for the team? Yeah, I tell you, Hayes, I don't know. I mean, they got a bunch of guys in the secondary. I, I think they I know, like it's him. odd. Yeah. Uh, I think they like him as a camp body. Hey, you know, cutting Lynn Bowden, I think Bowden's a similar player to Demario Douglas. So that tells me that they want to get Demario Douglas a lot of reps in camp. And right. that's certainly encouraging. I know some people like Lynn Bowden. I do too. He's a fun player, but he's kind of is what he is at this point. You know, you're yeah. really reaching if, if you're trying to give him a shot there. And Demario Douglas is all upside. Like we don't know who he's going to be. So right. in that sense, to me, it's encouraging because I, I think that this expands the reps for Demario Douglas in the spring and the summer. And I want him as involved as possible. Cause I think he can play a key role for this team this year. Yeah, I agree. Um, so as you guys drop questions in the chat, uh, if you guys want to do so, we will get going um, with, like I said, a few a full Q&A uh, episode here. And like I said, let you guys steer the ship. We'll talk all things Patriots. Um, just looking as we wait for questions co to come in, Alex, uh, as far as I know you talked about a potential Thursday Thanksgiving game with Dallas. Um, I'm trying to pull up the full Patriots schedule um, of opponents and sort of where they may or may not fall. So I know that Dakota Randall from Nesson was sort of filling out um, the list, right? So week 16 is a confirmed Giants and Eagles game, so they can't play them then. Week 12 is not Dolphins or Jets because they're playing then. And week 9 is not the Dolphins. Week 5 is not the Bills. So it's uh, – it's sort of being put together, but not really. You can find the rest of it on uh, on Twitter. But, again, I do you think we'll end up having a full Patriots schedule before the actual release yeah. comes out tomorrow night? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll all get put together. Because, I, I mean, I, yeah. I didn't see Dakota was doing that. I generally do that every year. I keep, like, yeah. a running, uh, you know, running tally of, mm -hmm. of in progress what it looks like. And, yeah, yeah, you can start narrowing these games down a little bit here. But well, you know, process of elimination, all that, we'll get there. I, I'd assume yeah. we're going to get Thanksgiving tomorrow morning. Like last year, I think that yeah. came out like late morning, maybe early afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, normally they give week one kind of, you know, they'll give week one, you know, a couple hours before. So right. although somebody usually breaks week one, that's a big game. 
the giant schedule tends to leak early as does the bills. They're, they're both on the Patriots schedule this year. So that's the other thing. Like they don't necessarily need to be Patriots leaks, right? You see what, where it's coming from other teams. And then sometimes the, the Monday night football schedule comes out a little, little early. So, uh-huh. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a couple. We'll see. Yeah. I, I will have it by like, I think three, four o'clock. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is that. So let's, uh, let's get into some of these questions here. So, uh, just thinking about veterans on the market, Andrew asks, could you see the Patriots adding one more veteran like a Zach Cunningham? Um, I'm trying to pull up here who who's available, but what do you think about the veteran market and bringing in another free agent? Yeah. They're kind I, I of mean, at capacity right now, but they could make some more moves. Th- there's always the chance. I don't know about Cunningham just cause I think they really like their linebacker group. You know, they bring yeah. everybody back from last year. They draft Marte Mop, who it feels like they're full there. I think if they're going to bring in somebody and yeah, I don't have off the top of my head, uh, you know, who's available. I would think if they're going to sign somebody, it's a safety, maybe a tight end. Those would be the two positions I'd look at, but you know, they could always add a veteran, but you're not going to go find an impact player at this point. The fact Zach Cunningham still unsigned, he's been hurt. Remember, uh, yeah. tell me there's something going on there. So I, I, you're not changing, you know, the, the total outlook of the roster with any signings at this point. Yeah, I'm looking at the at available for each now. Adrian Amos is likely the top safety on the board. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if that really moves the needle. Um, no tight ends really here at all. Uh, oh, we did this a few weeks ago. Michael Pruitt. Um, so that, again, that's not a big signing. It, I'm yeah. kind of surprised that Zeke Elliott is still a free agent. I know that. Wait, he's still a free agent? Yeah. Um, I, I know that running backs, you know, they're, they're not – I'm a huge proponent of don't take a running back on his second contract unless it's dirt cheap. So uh, he's on his third or fourth by now. But um, so, yeah, nothing – He wants really top good. running back money. Nobody's going to give it to him. He's got a lot of miles on him. Yeah, exactly. That's just what it is. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to this one. Top three post-draft – oh, wait, that's the wrong one. I was looking at something else. I thought there was a – oh, this one. Here we go. What is a camp battle you're most looking forward to slash has the biggest impact on the season? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, My mind, I'll I'll let you, no, I was going to let you think on it because uh, as you were, and my mind immediately goes to receiver. Um, And we talked about it. We kind of did it live on the show last week when we filled out who's going to be where on the field and different personnel. And it's uh, Taekwon Thornton versus Kendrick Bourne is interesting to me. Who plays and gets that top Z receiver uh, spot because Devontae Parker is going to be the X, and you would think Juju is going to fill the slot. And then at that point, could Kayshawn Boutte come in and have a really good camp and take over the Z? Uh, probably not, but it's something to think about, again, being a potential first-round pick at one point in his uh, in his career. Kendrick Bourne has been here. Tyquan Thornton been here a little less. But um, if he's taking – look, the fact that they waited till the sixth round – tells me that they believe in Tyquan Thornton to an extent where they're going to rely on him this year in the receiver room. Um, so he could make a big jump too. So I'm curious to see how, how that plays out in the, in the receiver room. I think tackle's a big one for me. And we talked about this leading up to the draft, right? It feels like they're good with their group, but yeah, clearly, right? It feels like there's a disconnect between uh, what we see and what they see. So I'm curious to see how they put it together. Is it going to be Trent Brown and Riley Reef like we think? Can Calvin Anderson make a push for a starting job? Is City Sal going to be involved? Yeah, that's going to be a big one to me. Is how how does this whole tackle position sort out? Yeah. Um. The other one's quarterback. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm absolutely kidding. Um, <laughs> Mac Jones is the guy. All right. Um. Whoop, no, wrong one. Sorry. Uh, neither of you have Keishon Boutte making the 53. No, I do. I, uh, I in do my too, roster, I think. I, I have Boutte on my 53-man roster projection so far. Um, I, I, I just remember see. now. I got to go yeah. look. I thought I did. I like. I know I tried to keep him on. Yeah. I think he was like my last guy on. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I have I six cut... receivers. Okay. I'm on guess... the bubble, though. Yeah, there you go. Um. All right, here we go. Uh, this one's funny because I still have the um, the the list of free agents up. Uh, any legit X wide receivers left in free agent? Guess who the top two on the NFL Trade Rumors dot com list of uh, available X for X wide receivers are? One's Nikhil Harry. I know that. No, it's not actually. Yeah, really? I, uh, yeah, I think he's still a bear. No. No, he's a free agent. Oh, okay. 
It's uh, um, it's Kenny Galladay and Julio Jones. Oh, hard pass. Yeah, so hard pass on both of those guys. I, I would be Team Julio yeah. uh, a few years ago. Yeah, I think he's he's just pretty much washed. Um, so. No, it's uh, because when when Harry and Sony Michelle are all still free agents. Oh, uh, okay. Juwan Williams signed before any of them. Juwan yeah, Williams did. signed Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Um, here's a question: right, Can Ramondre Stevenson be a top ten running back? He was last year. He already is. Say. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't think it's can he, you know, can he do it again? It's going to be interesting to see kind of where he's at physically after such a demanding workload last year. But I mean, he's proven he can do it. I, I would yeah. say that he has done it. Yeah. Uh, going back, looping this question into one of our ones before another interesting camp battle is a uh, backup running back, essentially not backup, yeah, but you know, second back. Pass catching, you know, is it Ty, is it Ty Montgomery? Does he return from injury? Is it James Robinson? We talked to James Robinson tomorrow uh, down at Gillette. He's speaking at 11, so uh, tune in for that too. But, um, yeah, that'll be an interesting one because you bring in Robinson on a cheap deal. I have him on my roster. I think that he makes the team. Um, but, again, that's a cheap enough deal where you very well could cut bait if, if you don't like what you see. And a guy like Pierre Strong, who you drafted in the fourth round last year, you know, pops as well. So, uh Stevenson top ten back, and that's another interesting position battle on on my radar. Uh yeah, let's see what else we got yeah. here. Um somebody says they've been watching the show for a long time. Thank you very much. Uh how do we feel about adding an interior defender and running back? Hunt at RB and such. See, I said Akeem Hicks. Uh is Kareem I, Hunt still a free I agent? believe I believe Kareem Hunt just signed the other day with the Broncos. I was going to say, I thought I saw he signed. No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't? I thought he signed with Denver. Yeah, you know, the the thing to me with that, and, and I, I like Kareem Hunt on the Patriots. I think he'd be a really good spell for Ramondre Stevenson. The problem is, I don't think that's the direction they want to go running back. Because if they felt like they needed another impact guy like that, I mean, he's unsigned for a reason. They would have signed him, right? Yeah. I, I think they're putting a lot of faith in Pierre Strong and Ramondre. And, um... And Kevin Harris, faith in Ramondre too, obviously. But yeah. uh, I think they're putting a lot of faith in Pierre Strong and Kevin Harris to to step into much bigger roles this year because that's kind of what they're missing: the pass catching back, and then the secondary early down back, which is what those two guys project as. So I don't, you know, if, if you sign Kareem Hunt, you kind of have to play Kareem Hunt. He's yeah. not coming here like James Robinson did to fight for a job, right? He's going to want to know he's going to play, and if they have a certain role in mind for Pierre Strong, if they have a certain role in mind for Kevin Harris, well, then Kareem Hunt's not going to play. Uh-huh. Now, if you get to camp and those two both just can't cut it, then you call Kareem Hunt, you say, you know what, we have a role for you now, and maybe that's how you sign him. Uh, so that that's an interesting one, a, a move that maybe I would make, but I feel like if they would make, they would have made already. As for uh, Akeem Hicks, they like their defensive tackles. I think yeah. they really like that group. It, it, not even like Gotcha, just going for the down. Carl Davis, Daniel Aquale. I think you'll see Sam Roberts play on the interior at times this year. They they feel good about where they're at with that group. I don't think that they're going to keep adding there. Yeah, I I, I tend to agree. Um, especially too at running back. Again, if they do sign Hunt, it's it's to play, and they kind of already have those um those fringe guys that it seems like they want to battle out at that position anyway. So uh, it, he would be a good fit, I think. Um, yeah, but it kind of pushes out people that you've already signed and brought back. So. Uh, somebody asking if we're going to be doing 2024 <laughs> draft fits anytime soon. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., a wide receiver. Yes. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, no, we'll, uh, uh, once college football season gets going, we'll start yeah. talking about that. I <laughs> generally take a month or two yeah, before no. I start dying, like truly dying back. In. Uh, I see some players here. And My there, two but. favorite players in the 2024 NFL draft are Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, and, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. That's about I, all I like I Jared Verse too, defensive end from Florida. Yeah, State, that's true. Yeah. And I guess Drake May will be okay. But um, yeah. All I right. I want to make a Drake May. Yeah, I, I yeah, need that's... to see like I didn't buy the hype last year because just these UNC quarterbacks are all such duds. And yeah. by the time it seemed like you know by t- I, so I didn't watch him a lot at the beginning, and then he finally seems like finally I'm like all right, maybe he's not a dud. I got to watch him, but I only got in a couple of games. So yeah. I I'm. I normally am like so out on UNC quarterbacks. Sam uh, Howell, Washington Commander, starting quarterback. Yeah, whether it's Sam Howell or who was the guy before Howell again? Trubisky. Um, 
Trubisky. I didn't like oh, Trubisky. Oh, uh, there was another one. I can't that everybody was all hot and bothered about. Yeah. Even going back to Baker Mayfield, who's not a UNC quarterback. I know he went to Oklahoma, but Mike, look at Baker Mayfield's game and tell me he's not a UNC quarterback. Uh, him, him and Sam Howell play the exact same way. Yeah, no, they're the same, they're the same guy. Um, the same quarterback. Marquise Trubisky's Williams. He's kind of the same guy, too. Oh, I did like Marquise Williams back in the day, yeah, actually. But he was uh, he was the one I thought you were thinking of. No, I, I think I was thinking of... Uh, Trubisky, but was Chaz Surratt a quarterback at one point? Yeah, he that? was. Yeah, he changed. Oh, positions. that's funny. That's I hilarious. liked him in the draft that year because of yeah, that. I, I remember that Chaz Surratt guy. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting to watch Drake May this year. I, there's a lot of quarterbacks that you know. I know I hyped up this quarterback class a lot during the pre-draft process, and I stand mm-hmm. by that. But I, I don't necessarily love it in the sense that there's like four or five guys I, I pin my name to say they're going to be great. You know, mm-hmm. Caleb Williams is obviously excellent. Yeah. There's just so many guys with a chance to be great. Quinn Ewers, Bo that, Right, Quinn Ewers, Bo Nix, Michael Penix in Washington, Grayson Joe McCall. Milton. I'm looking at a Yeah, a Joe Milton now. is going to be – I don't. we're going to have to have a whole conversation about yeah. that. Because Joe Milton is his own thing. Joe Milton is Joe Milton. But What do you think about Shadur Sanders? I, think, I was going to say, I th- Shadur Sanders, I believe, is eligible this year. Like he's, yeah. So all these guys, like, there's, there's real a lot outside. of names. What? There's a lot of names. Right. There's there's real upside with a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys have flashed. The question is how real it is. And look, they won't all pan out. Some of them will fall back to be like third or fourth round picks, project picks. But a couple of these guys are going to hit. We're going to have a lot of first round quarterbacks next year. So I'm I'm yeah. excited for that class. Um, yeah. Real quick on Joe Milton, because I said we're going to have to have a talk, and then I didn't. Yeah. And people are going to tweet me about it, ask if he is. So Joe Milton is the quarterback at Tennessee. Um, he was at Michigan. He transferred yep. to Gen- to Tennessee. He was the starter in 2021. Was too erratic. Got benched. Uh, and then for Hendon Hooker, who won the starting job, and then obviously took over last year when Hendon Hooker tore his ACL. Yeah. Uh, Joe Milton. So he's going to be uh, 24 for the draft next year. Six five, two fifty. If you think Josh Allen has a big arm, yeah, wait until you see Joe Milton. He's, but the thing, of, the thing about Joe Milton is, if you need him to throw the ball 80 yards in the air, he's going to throw it 80 yards in the air. If you need him to throw a five-yard touch pass, he's going to throw it 80 yards in the air. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> just, there's one clip of him where, I'm trying to remember what game it was, but there's a receiver running like across the back of the end zone and the guy's like open and Milton drills a guy in the fourth row and the velocity on the throw is unbelievable, (laughs) but it's just like, if he can ever, he's not like super mobile, but he's also a tank. So he doesn't run a lot. You know, he's going to get compared to Josh Allen. He's big. He has a strong arm. He doesn't move like Josh Allen does. The comp to me would be like closer to big Ben in that regard. Cause he is hard to tackle. He is a strong, sturdy guy. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna be uh if he can start putting the ball like on location in the short and intermediate, he's gonna be a thing. But I don't know because he is he is erratic, but oh he just just a little flick so, of the wrist and a thing goes 65 yards. You're you're uh you're drooling over Joe Milton, but you hate Josh Allen. I think that's kind of hilarious. Well, here's the difference. I'm not willing <laughs> to sit here and say Joe Milton should be NFL MVP. Fair. That's a fair point. I'm sitting here saying Joe Milton's entertaining because he's so you like josh allen's game so you like josh allen's game you like I, watching josh allen once it, no because i have to watch <laughs> everybody freak out because they don't know what they're watching i like chaos in my sports i enjoy chaos i enjoy yes. things breaking down josh allen is very chaotic but people won't admit that and let me enjoy the chaos so it bothers me fair, fair joe milton is like insanely chaotic and people watch joe milton say oh he's nuts like not to, not to get political. Remember when there was the uh, weather balloon thing in like South mm-hmm. Carolina or whatever it was? Yeah, yeah. That got Joe Milton trending on Twitter because people kept saying, just have Joe Milton hit it with a football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe Milton. So that, that's my thing. That's on hilarious. Yeah. All right. All right. We, we can get back to this. That was yeah. a nice little college football. No, that's there. good. Uh, we should have we put the backer up. Uh, surprise cut. So. Jason looks like he's saying that Cody Davis and Mac Wilson are going to be his surprise cuts. Um, so I want to ask you what yours are. 
Um, I'll have a couple that I can think of as well. Yeah, Cody Davis isn't a bad one just because, you know, he had a serious knee injury last year. He's in his 30s now. What kind of condition is he in? You know, does Kendrick Bourne count as a surprise cut at this point? I don't know. Uh, um, I would say so. I mean, I guess it depends on what happens with Butte and uh, Demetri yeah. Douglas. But. Um, I'm going through my. I'm just going through my roster projection here. I actually had Connor McDermott off. Okay. Because see, yeah, he seems like a guy. There's no guaranteed money in his contract. They can cut him, IR somebody, get him back, maybe yeah. get him on the practice squad. So that's an easier one. Um, Carl Davis, I, kind of the same thing. Like the guy you can cut, get back on the practice squad. Yeah. I did struggle. All right, so I guess here's the two. Um, Here's the two big ones for me are both at linebacker because they have so many linebackers, Mike. They're going to sort this thing out somehow. Anthony Jennings, Ronnie Perkins. I kept Jennings. I cut the both of them as well. Oh, okay. Okay, So I kept Jennings. Uh, I cut Mac Wilson, as as Jason says here. Uh, McMillan, I guess you could put in here too. Basically, McMillan, Mac Wilson, Anthony Jennings, Ronnie Perkins. So those four guys for one spot. Maybe two. Maybe yeah. two if things fall a certain way. Um, Jennings to me would be the biggest surprise cut of them all just because he actually played a pretty significant role last year. Mm-hmm. I again, I kept him, but they're gonna have to make some tough cuts at linebacker one way or the other. Yeah, uh, mine's Calvin Anderson. I think that uh, you know, they they like McDermott, they liked him enough to bring him back after last year, so he knows kind of what they want to do. I know it's gonna change with O'Brien and Adrian Clem, but uh, I think that. You know, yeah, they signed Anderson, but if they like what McDermott does, they drafted City Sow to apparently play tackle. If Riley Reef can hang on and, you know, win a starting job and Trent Brown can keep his head on straight, then I think they there's a chance they cut Calvin Anderson. Uh, and Carl Davis as well, for me. Uh, I think there's a chance that, like you said, they like a lot of those interior guys, and he could be the odd man out that uh, they look to bring back in, in uh, on the practice squad. Um, before we continue on, let's talk about FanDuel. And I need to take down this question as well because uh, make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs. Uh, yeah, the Celtics stink, but uh, you can still bet on them and on the rest of the NBA playoffs, like on the 76ers, if uh, if the shoe fits, uh, the, the Lakers, the Nuggets, the Suns. There's a bunch of, good, uh, bunch of good series going on in the NBA playoffs, and you can bet on it all on FanDuel. And new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That is one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. The app I've talked about it. It's super safe. It's easy. It's secure. As soon as your bet hits, you get paid instantly, and you can use it to bet on your next bet. Uh, there's promos every single day. They have a big promos tab with a lightning bolt. It's super easy to find. They always have the best ones. Tonight, I believe, is a combined bet with uh, Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Um, something along those lines. They boost the odds for you. It's great, and so. Uh, if it wins, it cashes instantly, and there's no better place to bet on all of the playoff action than America's number one sports book. So what you need to go do is visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and go get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston for your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. FanDuel is the official partner of the NBA and is also the exclusive wager partner of the CLNS Media Network. So head over there to FanDuel.com slash Boston as you see on screen right now. All right, let's get some questions more. So this one's, uh, we sort of talked about this, but uh, we've talked back and forth about Ty Montgomery and, you know, his injury situation last season. He had a couple of different ones. I think it was an ankle and then an arm. Um, so he was kind of all over the place, but he looked good both in preseason, uh, in training camp in preseason, and then in week one he had a receiving touchdown as well. And then yep. he sort of you know, he got hurt and was was gone. So, uh, he's older now. I think he's uh, at least in his 30s. And so uh, do you think uh, he ultimately makes the team? I know it's super early. We haven't seen anything. But what do you sort of project for Ty, Quan- Th- uh, Ty-, Jesus. Ty Montgomery going into 2023? I think he's probably battling James Robinson for a passing uh, yeah. passing down back role. Now, he's another guy I think they can maybe get on the practice squad and call up when needed. I liked what he brought to the table last year. In theory, I still like his skill set. We'll see how healthy he is. But – Again, he's going to get pushed by by Pierre Strong. He's going to get pushed by James Robinson, and he's going to have to beat him out in camp, but that's going to kind of be a big story. Like you said before, the running back uh, position battle is going to be one to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
why does it seem like most do not have confidence in Kevin Harris and Pierre Strong, despite rookies running backs normally not playing? That's a good point. We've talked about them, you know, effectively redshirting uh, running backs. Uh, we talked about it on the show. They did it with um, Sony Michelle basically up until the postseason. They've done it uh, in the past with, again, guys like Ramondre Stevenson. Or not, not really Ramondre. It, it sort of changed with him. But Damien Harris didn't play his rookie year, and so – are we jumping the gun a little bit on these guys? Do you think they, they deserve a little bit of, of a chance? I know that I'm kind of already out on Kevin Harris. Uh, I Nothing against, you know, I guess I shouldn't say nothing against his play because if he played better, he would be on the team. But I just think they've filled the room. And, um, you know, Pierre Strong is going to play a role as a pass catcher. And I think Harris just kind of seems like the odd man out in the room. Nothing against him, his play specifically. But uh, are we jumping the gun on these guys? A little bit. And, and you know, I think yeah. that, the John here brings up a good point. Patriots rookie running backs don't play and that gets lost on a lot of people. And I think people were finally starting to understand it. And then they broke the mold with Ramondre Stevenson and suddenly everybody forgot about it. Right. Why, why does it seem like people don't have confidence in Harrison strong? Cause it felt like the team didn't have confidence in them last year. They didn't play them. They desperately needed a running back. They ran Ramondre Stevenson yeah. into the ground instead of playing these two guys in the, excuse me, in the brief moments they did play, they looked pretty good. You know, not, you know, instant pro bowlers or anything, but they look capable. You know, it's one thing to say, Hey, I feel confident that, that he'll have a chance to handle that role. And Hey, he's going to be a great player. Those are two different things. Right. Are you them going to be great? I don't know. I don't know. I do, you know, Pierre strong specifically. I like his game. I think he's a good fit for what his role should be here, but you know, I feel good enough in saying, Hey, give him a fair shot to win the role. They've been here for a year. Now they've gotten the coaching, all of that. I'm not saying Pierre Strong needs to be out there, you know, rushing punts. Please don't do that again because he clearly can't do it. But, yeah, give him a chance to make plays as running backs because they kind of did last year. And they need more running back depth. They can't do this with Ramondre Stevenson again. They can't run him into the ground again. So, yeah, let him play. I think they're as good an option as anybody. I like them as much as I like Robinson or Montgomery or J.J. Taylor. So, I, I would hope they give him a chance. I, I, I wouldn't... Yeah look too much into them not playing last year. People kind of point to that and say, well, if they were good, they would have played them. No, they they really wouldn't have. 2019, they got backed up with running backs as well, and they refused to play a rookie, Damian Harris, and he turned out to be a pretty good player. So right. I, I wouldn't look too much into that. It's just kind of one of the weird things that they do. It is an odd thing, and the fact that they they switched it up with Ramondre, just is, it's odd. It, it doesn't make a, a whole lot of sense. But frankly, Bill Belichick sometimes doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially lately. So, uh, all right, this one's simple. Best to worst QBs in the AFC East. Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Mac Jones, Tua Tagovailoa. That's my top four. Rodgers, Allen, Mac, Tua slash Mike White. Interesting. We're both very down on Tua, which I like. Uh, I well, hey, look. I, I think, I'm on the record as this. I availability is the most important ability. I actually, right. I'm a fan of Tua's skill set. I don't think he's ever fully recovered from the hip injury he had in college, and that hurt him a right. lot coming in. But I think he's starting to adjust. But the guy can't stay on the field. And I'm sorry, it's my whole spiel with Jimmy Garoppolo, right? If you can't stay on the field, yep. I'm not interested in you playing quarterback for me. So Fair. that Tua might actually have more like physical ability than Mac Jones does. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think Mac, Mac, it'd be, well, he hurt his ankle. He missed three games to his missed time right. every year. Um, that that's, a, that's a big, uh, knock in my book. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, speaking of availability, uh, Parker seems like a lock to make the roster, but he did miss quite a bit of time last season. So, is he truly a lock to make this team? I know we talked about it. he is sort of the uh, the only true X receiver on the roster. Um, so given the fact that he does miss some time, he did a, he did last year. He has in the past with Miami. Uh, is he truly a lock to make the team? I would think so, just because they don't have another real X. Like Tyquan Thornton would really have to right. break out. You know, if they drafted a guy like Cedric Tillman, it maybe changes things a little bit. But I don't know who else is playing that role. Frankly, if he's right. not here, like, are they going to put Mike Kosicki out there that much? If he's not, that's a lot to ask him in his right. first year in a system with a new team on a one. year. If he's not a lock, hey, come in and play X wide receiver. Like, yeah, if he's not a lock, he's as close to a lock as you can be. Like, yeah, if he has a really bad camp, he's got one year left on his deal. Maybe they do something, but yeah. um, not going to outright cut him. 
Maybe he gets traded. They're not going to outright cut him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony says he hates to say it, but outside of Christian Gonzalez, we're screwed at defensive back. I disagree. I love the Patriots uh, second. It's a weird take. I think that. So Jack Jones, uh, if his head's on straight, he's he had a great rookie year when he played. Marcus Jones, obviously a stud uh, on both sides of the football. I obviously like Christian Gonzalez, but I mean, their safety room, even without McCordy, when you have Kyle Duggar, Jabril Peppers, and Adrian Phillips uh, on the back end, that's a pretty stout three. Josh Bledsoe was uh, solid. I know he, I, I think he he probably ends up getting cut because their defensive backs are so good. John Jones is there as well. Jalen Mills, like, I don't know about this trade, Tony. I think their defensive backfield's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they, look, they still got something to figure out at corner. I, I don't love their right. corner situation after Gonzalez. I, I like what they have in the slot, Marcus Jones, John Jones, but is John Jones going to be on the boundary? He's going to be Jack Jones. You know, do they still trust him? There's questions there, certainly, but. But I'm okay with it. Like, I'm okay with Jack Jones on the boundary. So I am. They, like, but are they? They, they have a decision. The they have a, are they? No, yeah, that's fair. But it's like they have a decision to make because they have people to, to put there. Right. But it's not like they have nobody there. It's just, if like, they don't play Jack Jones, that depth gets gets short real quick. You know, are they going to play me or speed out there? You know, I like what they have in the slot. I think their safety group is one of the best in the league. And I'm expecting a big year from Jabril Peppers, honestly. Second year in the system, now fully healthy, coming away from that torn ACL. I think he can play a really big role for them this year. I do. So, yeah, um, I like their defensive backs. Here's I don't think you mentioned him when you were going through. I didn't mention him there. Uh, I kept him. Do you, so I kept him. I, I I was it on this show that I said it. He's this year's Chelani Tavaya. We're yeah. gonna keep getting asked why we're talking about him making the team because he's making the team because they want yeah, him they like on him. the team, whether right. you want him there or not. They like him. And look, yep. I learned that lesson the hard way. In as camp as hard year. as some people are on Miles Bryant, you know, he there are some things he does well. I, I know it gets lost. He's a very smart player. He's a really good tackler, especially for his size. Now, they've given him some impossible assignments. You have to remember that. Like, he's not a guy you put on an Isaiah McKenzie. He can't cover that guy. That's not why he's here. If you're signing him for that role, of course he's going to look bad. You're essentially playing him out of position. I would like to try him at safety. I also He's a guy that's going to be great on special teams. Like, at the very least, he's going to have a role on special teams. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see him try him at safety. I still think he's going to get some, some snaps as a slot corner you know one way or the other but he'll be here i i feel like he's gonna be here yeah yeah um all right let's do another rating game uh this is i i can't do this off the top of my head the defenses in the afc east are really good rate the best or worst defenses in the afc east um patriots patriots and jets are clearly the top two you can go back and forth on the order with that yeah then the bills but they need like, what's Vaughn Miller going to look like coming off that torn ACL? Because when they didn't have yeah. him late last year, the defense kind of sucked. And if he's not going to yeah, be no. good, they didn't do much to add pass rushers. They lost Tremaine Edmonds. Um, right. It, I honestly might have him fourth. I might have the Dolphins ahead of him. I, I might. I mean, it's a, all four. If Vaughn. All four are really good. Yeah, they're all really good. They're all top half of the league. If Vaughn Miller's cooking, right. I'll go Bills three. If he's going to come back and look like a 30 something year old off a torn ACL that might drop the bills down. Like he's that impactful for them, but I, however you want to do it, Patriots, jets, jets, Patriots in the first tier, dolphins, bills, bills, dolphins in the second tier. Like that's how I, I do it. I I really struggle between the two in each tier to find an order. Yeah. This is putting a high ceiling on Marte Mapu, but should he turn into Fred Warner or Matt Milano at middle linebacker? How good can this defense be? Look, that would put them, they already are, like you said, probably the, the best defense in the division, if not second best behind the Jets. If Mapu can turn into Fred Warner, who is a top 10 player in yeah. the league, that's incredible. Like, that's a really, that's a lot to put on this kid. I think he's going to be really good, but, I mean, to put that expectation on him doesn't feel right. That could be a ceiling for sure, but, uh, no, if he gets there, I mean, he that's, he's dominant and they're dominant for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that—that's a game-changing play you're talking about in Fred Warner. Yeah, now, right. The hey, just 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 slide Fred Warner into the Patriots defense. What happens? What makes Fred Warner elite is he plays like a guy that's 217 pounds. He's like 230. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you know Milano's maybe a better comp. 
again, the question comes yeah. down to, are they going to let him play like that? Cause they generally don't let their linebackers play that way. They don't have that role in their defense. I think if they let him play his game, he can be a decent player. It, it, it's more about usage than anything else. Yeah. Um, Another good one. Uh, will Adrian Clem work with Bill O'Brien as an offensive coordinator assistant? Mm. I, I think if not him, somebody will, because uh, O'Brien's here for a good time, not a long time. He's trying to get That's, a head Someone asked job. that question earlier, too, okay. how long you think he'll be here. So let's loop those together. Year or two, three max. Uh, you know, he's trying to go get another head coaching job. And if he turns this thing around, he's going to get it. If he doesn't turn it around, he's going to get fired. So one way or the other, he's not here for a while. Having a guy that's kind of been under his wing – I don't know that he'll get the official like assistant offensive coordinator, run game coordinator, pass game coordinator, whatever title, but right. You know, Adrian Clem, maybe will lawing just because of the pre-existing relationship with O'Brien. Uh, maybe it's Troy Brown, you know, whoever it is. I think Clem probably makes the most sense just given his background, but yeah, I would love to see them have somebody kind of at the hip with Bill O'Brien learning the ins and outs of coordinating right. an offense. Yeah, Clem, Clem and Troy Brown uh, interviewed for the – Troy Brown interviewed for the offensive coordinator role. I don't remember if he did. He must have. Maybe it wasn't official. Yeah, I don't think he did. So, I mean, those two – I like. I don't right. think it was ever – might have only there. been Kaylee. I think Kaylee. Kaylee was the Kaylee only did. Interview. Yeah, because it was that Kaylee, Clem, like, yeah. Sean Jefferson, and Keenan McCardell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Brown didn't. But so, Clem at least interviewed for the job, didn't get it, and still came here. So – whether there was something behind the scenes, a handshake agreement, what have you, obviously not guaranteeing anything, but hey, you can come here and be the O-line coach and then learn how to be an offensive coordinator yeah. as well. I could see that being a thing, and it would make sense because, like you said, as much as I'd like Bill O'Brien to be the OC here forever because he's a damn good OC, he, he wants to he wants to go back to the top. Uh, this is another good one for for Marte Mop. Who Isaiah Simmons? Yeah. 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 You, know, you know, if they use – that's not exactly that Matt Milano, Fred Werner role, but – if they used him in a role like that, he'd, he'd be good. He'd be, I, I yeah. think he's going to be sneaky good at rushing the passer. Didn't do it a ton in college. I just look at his skill set though. Like Kyle Duggar was better at that than we expected. I, I kind of want to see them not all the time. Cause you need him in coverage. You need him kind of spying quarterbacks, but I think more than anything else, I'm interested in seeing him as a pass rusher. Cause if he can be a threat as a pass rusher, that that's really going to unlock it. Cause if you just start accounting for him and box counts, and then he's dropping the coverage like that. That just is going to scramble an offense pre-snap. So yeah, it's going to be uh, um, it's a good comp. Yeah, I like this one. Put us on the spot a little bit. Give me your breakout player on offense and defense for the Patriots this year. On offense, I want to say it. Kayshawn Butte can be a breakout player if he makes the team. Um, other than Butte, Tyquan Thornton, I think. They have a lot of confidence in him, and I think they're going to use him. I think he could break out. On defense, it's Christian Barmore. Barmore was awesome his rookie year. Uh, was injury riddled a little bit this past season, but when he played, he was really good. I think Barmore can be and will be a stud, and I think he's going to. I think he's going to shine on defense this year. Yeah, so I'm going to go Kendrick Bourne as the breakout on offense. Okay. I, I just think he's got yeah. a lot of time to make up for. He seems like a guy that's going to kind of take that chip on his shoulder from last year and yeah. roll with it. On defense, this is this is tough. I feel like because I want to say like you know, Josh Uche he broke out last year. Yeah, Duggar broke does, out last year. Does Jack Jones count? I don't know. Right, Kyle Duggar broke out last year. Does Chris Gonzalez count? Sure. Like I think he could. Be I said really I good. took Butte. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take Christian Gonzalez. I'm gonna say Kendrick Bourne, Christian Gonzalez. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll do a few more and then we'll finish off with the Boston sports minute, bringing in Kellen Moore to help Bill O'Brien. So Kellen Moore is the OC of the Los Angeles chargers. So I don't see Kellen Moore taking a, a non OC role anymore. Um, I also yeah. don't know how much I trust him as an OC. I think that he was a, a potential head coach candidate in Dallas and then he never took a gig or never got a gig. And then Dallas's offense was kind of up and down with Dax injuries. And then he just had to take a lateral move to LA. So I don't know about Kellen Moore. He's fine. Fun, fun college player. He, he'd be a good one for the college football minute 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, I don't know about this one. Oh, love those Boise State teams. Oh, yeah. Love them. Yeah. Uh, I actually know that he was, I'm thinking before him, like Jared's, what's Jared Zabransky doing? Let Jared Zabransky come Yeah, on right. <laughs> um, it's also a different offense that Kellen Moore ran in yeah. Dallas. It's not, right. you know, it's a different style. I like Kellen Moore. I do, but it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, 
biggest bust potential outside of Kayshawn Butte. I, it's got to be Marte Mapu because they will yeah. butcher his usage like they've done with so many draft picks the last couple of years, and he just won't look like he belongs. Yeah. So I also Marte think Jake Mapu Andrews. For me. Jake, Jake Andrews, too. I mean, they took him with a fringe top 100 pick, and he they could have got him later, and I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel but like, like, I don't know, maybe this is semantics. I feel like okay. bust potential implies there's some hype around like the yeah, ceiling. That's fair. I don't think yeah. anybody is that kind of what everybody's expecting with Jake Andrews that he's just like, why the hell did they take this guy in the fourth round? Yeah, so, that's fair. So I guess it's expected bust. But. How, how do you want to define bust is the question there? But yeah. you know, I wouldn't disagree with your assessment of that. Yeah. Um, right. But I'm Marte Mapu, high, high floor, low, low ceiling. Yeah. Mac Jones over under 4,000 oh. passing yards, 25 touchdowns. I am going to say. Hmm. I'm going to say over on the yards. Okay. I'm going to say under on the touchdowns. Cause I think this is going to be one of those years where they get down to the five a ton and they're just pounding the ball in. Okay. Um, I thought there was an over under on this on FanDuel. Uh, there's not, so you can't bet on it yet. No, those it's usually hard. don't come out till like camp starts, right? Yeah, but they have Stevenson and Judon for uh, – oh. they have Ramondre Stevenson. We'll do these as we do it. Yeah, so. it's because they're worried Mac isn't going to be the start of Mike. Yeah, right. What zappies <laughs> over under? I should do my uh, own dumb guy. I, was, I, I, I try to take Maz's or Murray. I, was, I didn't yeah, do it justice. I was going to say, you're you're entrenched in, uh, in your employer big time yeah, here. No. Uh, yeah, Mike, they think Zappy's going to be the starter. That's why it's not there. All right, let's have Zappy's fun. over on. <laughs> Ramadre Stevenson rushing guards. Over under 975 and a half. He oh, went over 1,000 last over. year. I know I keep saying they can't run him into the ground this year. I know I keep saying they shouldn't do it, and they're in trouble if they do it. Mike, guess what they're going to do? Yeah, they're going to run him. They're going to run him into the ground. Over. Yep. Matthew Jude on regular season sacks. Over under 11 and a half. Ooh. I'm going to go over. I'm, he's been yeah. over both years he's been here, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe They're so. all kind of consolidated. I'll go over. I'll go over on both of those. Okay. I like the over on Stevenson, too. Um, Is that it for Patriots? Patriots, regular season wins over under seven and a half. They're going to go over seven and a half. They're going to go over, yeah. They're gonna yeah. Over. I don't know how much, but they're going to go over. Is yeah. that it? And then uh, to make the playoffs, plus 235, yes, minus 300, no. Yeah, I think i end up on the outside looking in. Yeah, me too. But I, I, plus two thirty five isn't a bad price. Uh, yeah, they, it's, you want to throw ten bucks on it? I was going to say they were fringe, that. fringe seven seed last year. But uh, thanks to Fanduel for those odds. Uh, and f- as far as Mac Jones, I didn't give my pick, so I'll say over on both. I think Bill O'Brien's going to unleash unleash the kid. I'm excited for Mac this year. I really am. I think, and I could go on about it for an hour and a half if I wanted to. But I just think with what happened here, uh, you've, we've talked about it, and I agree that nobody. You know, you don't deserve anything, right? Like, oh, Mac deserves another chance. He doesn't really deserve anything. He hasn't done much to, to for you to say, like, there's no way they can't move on from him. But he did get screwed last year. And I think that being a top 15 pick with what they've, you know, put into him, I just think that he does. He kind of deserves another chance to, to shine here. And I think Bill O'Brien's going to do it for him. So uh, over on both. Um, all right, let's take... One more, um, if I can find a, a good one, and then we will um, hit a Boston Sports Minute and get out of here. So, yeah. All right, let's give a letter grade for the draft because we didn't really do letter grades. I don't know if you do letter grades on the Sports Hub. I, um, I Yeah, I did them on the uh, the Sports Hub podcast, Matt Dahl, okay. sportshub.com. There you go. So uh, I haven't given a letter grade officially, but, you know, off the cuff, I'm going to go a B. I liked their draft. Especially early and especially late. The middle kind of floundered a little bit, but I liked what they did at kicker with the, you know, they found, they wanted Chad Ryland. They traded up for Chad Ryland. I get he's a kicker, but they, they used their assets and they went and got someone they wanted. They needed a punter and they went and got Barringer. And then look, the upsides on the receivers are awesome. Could they have made a couple different picks and, you know, not went Jake Andrews and maybe took a shot at somewhere else, someone else somewhere. Sure. But I loved the first round. I liked the second round, and the back end of the draft was pretty good, too. So I'm going to go with a B. Yeah, I would like a B. I'm kind of the same way. I thought they, at the end of the day, the draft's about adding good football players. For the most part, they did that. Yeah. You know, I'm, the tackle thing, I don't mind as much. I know a lot of people are holding it against them. They didn't take a tackle. I'm yep. more bothered, personally, they didn't take a tight end if we're going to do that thing. Yeah, same. Right? Um, really, if they'd mix a tight end in there somewhere, maybe instead of one of those linemen uh, in the fourth round or one of those uh, corners in the sixth round, seventh round, 
I, I'd probably give him an A. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm like a B though. You know they they did well. It's not. Oh my God. I, I, you know how much are we grading on a curve too compared to the last few years? Right. And goal strange, but got the best corner in the draft when corner was their biggest need. They got two potential playmakers on defense. You know high ceiling guys, even if the floor is a little low. Uh, did the same thing at receiver later on. Yeah, B. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's finish this one off with a dreaded Boston Sports Minute. No, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be therapeutic. I, that's fair. So the Celtics lose game five last night, 115-103. Al Horford goes 0 for 7 from 3. Jason Tatum can't score a lick in the first quarter. He sort of, I guess, bubbles back to earth a little bit. Jalen Brown can't make free throws. Their defense was suspect. Malcolm Brogdon, who is supposed to be, you know, your six-man hustle guy, is not even putting a hand up on Tyrese Maxey. I just... Look, I'll let you go off in a, in a second, but as bad as last night was, something still tells me that they're going to come back and win six and seven and be just fine because they did it last year against Milwaukee, but I don't like relying on that. And I also, I haven't said it much on this show. I like Joe Mazzula. I like that he oh, lets Mike, them play. Oh, Mike, no. No, I like Mike, that he lets no. them play. Yeah, I do. All right, uh, I'm going to make you defend some things here. Okay. Then. Okay. For, this was Joe Mazzula's first quote last night when he was asked what happened. Yeah. If, oh, no, if quote, I worked the game last yeah. night, it's the first game yeah. I've worked of theirs this year. I know I'm late to the party. I heard people kind of say, yeah, Joe talks a little weird. Says some, some yeah. strange things. You don't realize how banana land this guy is until you sit in the press yeah. conference. So maybe you'll turn me over. over this was his over first this quote last night, Mike. Okay. That was the first game of the playoffs that we didn't play well, in my opinion. And so we can't lose our perspective. We can't lose our perspective mm-hmm. of we played really good basketball. And this was our first really, really bad game of the playoffs. It doesn't come at the best time, but we just have to shift our perspective and get ready for the next game. Mike, in 20 seconds, in that quote, did you catch that? We can't lose our perspective. Mm-hmm. 17 words later, 18 words later, whatever it is, we just have to shift our perspective. <laughs> What's the message, Joe? What happened. are you telling the team, Joe? Because that was part of the question. After a game like this, what happened? What do you tell your team? Well, apparently he's telling them two different things. Later on, he gets asked, you know, mm-hmm. last year, like you said, last year, down 3-2 to Milwaukee, going on the right. road. A lot of the same guys here. Do you bring that up in front of the team? He said he's not going to do it. He said <laughs> he's not going to bring it up. Why the hell not? Yeah, he didn't. And he followed up. He said, "No, I I think they'll they will, as in the players will bring it up. That's not their job, Joe. <laughs> it's not their they, if they're look. I, I think coaching in the NBA overall is overrated. Like it's the yeah, least. I, I would agree coach with that. Of the four major sports. If there is one thing the coach does, it's set Motivate. the mindset for the team. Yeah. And Joe Mazzulla is saying, I'm not going to do it. But if I were to give him a message, it would be." Don't lose your perspective, but shift your perspective. One other thing Joe Mazzulla said uh-huh. last night. I think this was the best one, if I know what you're talking about. Was He was asked if he felt the team played hard enough to win. Joe, do you feel the team played hard enough to win? He said, I felt like we had the intention yeah. of playing hard enough <laughs> to win. What the hell does that mean? Joe Mazzulla. Or, 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 uh, I, I forget exactly how this question was set up. Um but, he, you know, basically, what does it mean? The intention to win. You didn't, and by the way, two different things. We yeah. had the intention to play hard enough to win, and we played hard enough to win. I had, you know, go to go to your significant other on their birthday, empty-handed. Oh, I had the intention yeah. of buying you a really nice gift and just leave it at that. But, all right, Joe, what does that mean? You had the intention to play really hard. You didn't. He was right. at, okay, I remember what it was. He asked, is it a deeper issue? Is it a deeper issue that this team had the intention to play really hard and didn't show Missoula. That's a great question. No, I don't think so. Don't think it's a deeper issue. Mm-hmm. I think when you have the intentions of really, really wanting to win, it doesn't work out for you sometimes. And so I thought we had intentions of really, really wanting to win and trying to win it. And sometimes when that happens, it has a negative effect. Okay. So here's the message. So you're pressing. So you're pressing. Don't here's try. The, <laughs> no, here's the message from Joe Missoula heading into the elimination game. 
I'm not going to tell my team anything. But if I were going to tell them something, it's to both not lose their perspective and adjust their perspective. Sure. And what exactly is that perspective? Maybe we shouldn't try so hard. Maybe we shouldn't want to win so bad. What the hell are we doing? Makes sense to me. What the hell is any of that? See, that you as much as I'm on here, the day after, and by the way, yeah, it's all press conference stuff. Go back and watch that game. They made zero adjustments on either end of the floor. On the offensive end, I look, I get it. They were getting good looks and they weren't falling. And yeah. Zula and Tatum and Horford and Brown all talked about that. It's great. At a certain point, though, if the looks aren't falling, you need to go find new looks. Yeah, stop shooting. And right. the one thing they did was attack the basket and try to draw fouls, which generally is not a bad philosophy. But when you have Joel Embiid in the paint, that's not an option. He right. had four blocks last night and packed a handful of other shots. No, do something else. They, according to Jared Weiss, the athletic, who does a, you know, one of the top Celtics guys, CLNS yep. alumni, by the way. Yep. They ran one set play the entire second half. Can't do that. Yeah. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they didn't change a damn thing the entire game. James Harden and Tyrese Maxey ran a combined 53 pick and rolls. They scored uh, a 1.15 points for possession. So it's something like a hundred and it's a lot of points. They scored w- yeah. or no, it's like 60, 61 points. I think they scored 61 points running the same play over and over and over in the Celtics never adjusted. And by the way, that was also an issue against the Hawks. They right. saw that Hawks pick and roll for about three games before they stopped stepping under it and fighting through the screen. And when they did, things changed. They didn't make a single damn adjustment, Mike. That's coaching. No, you don't get to come on here. I, I know this is a Democratic show. We each say our part. You do not get to come on here today and defend Joe Missoula. You don't get to do that. Not uh, after so, that performance. I, but, okay, like, I get, like at the end of the day, you have to make your shots. It's a make or miss league, and I, I get that saying, and I, I, I believe it's true. If you're getting open looks, you're doing something right on offense. If they're not going to fall, they're not falling, and it's just not your night. All right, explain right. the defensive end then. Uh, the defensive end was a terrible effort. It was awful. 53, and, forget the effort. 53 times they ran the same play. Yeah, Celtics no. Celtics defended it the same way 53 times. I'm with you. I'm more so looking back at, at Sunday when everyone gets in up in arms about the timeout versus no timeout. They've done that all year. They just let them play, and they went 53 and 25 or whatever. Okay, but a lot of those games they lost were because Missoula didn't call a timeout at the end of the game, and they screwed it up. And and look, it's a little far-fetched. I you, think. Don't, you don't have to call a timeout. If you want to run up the floor and try to catch the Sixers off guard and not let them set up, fine. When Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are dribbling around with yeah, no idea what's that. going on, yeah. there's under 10 seconds on the clock. Then you call the timeout. Right, yeah, you got you to gotta get two shots. You got to get two looks there. It, it was not when it, when this, this playoffs has been a horrible look for Joe Missoula. I, I'm sorry, it's the reality. You see it any other way, you're drinking the green. Eh, no, I feel like it's a, I no, I just I feel like there's some blame on the players as well to you know, you, you got to make your shots and you got to make your free throws. And I again, again, last night was not strictly free throws, right? Even if they made the nine, they, right. made, they wouldn't have won the game, but um, no, they have uh, they have an uphill battle now as the they were the finals favorites. Uh, last night they go down to Philly. Or they lose to Philly, and uh, now they got to win two on the road. So, or no, one on the road, one at home. So, uh, should be interesting. What do you think? Do they do it, or are they are they down for the count? No, they're cooked. They're cooked. I, Bo- I body they're really language was there last night. They're Celtics done. in seven. Celtics in seven. Um, all right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Um, we will be back on Friday, uh, Alex, because tomorrow night the. Well, the Celtics are on tomorrow night, but the schedule release comes out tomorrow night as well. So yep. we're going to let that happen, let that dust settle, and then we will be back to react to the entire Patriots uh, 2023 schedule coming up on Friday afternoon. So the time is TBD. It's going to be close to the afternoon instead of nighttime. So we will get back to you all. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at RealAlexBarth for him, at Mike Cadwick for me. We'll keep you updated on when we'll be back on the show. Uh, until then, if you haven't already, and you want to support the show, go to FanDuel.com slash Boston. You can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets uh, should your first bet lose. So, again, go to FanDuel.com slash Boston. Uh, they, uh, they sponsor the show, so give them some love. And uh, don't bet on the Celtics, I'll tell you that. that as much as I think they're going to win, I, I think I, I don't know if I would take them. So, again, check out FanDuel. Follow Alex on Twitter. Read his stuff at 98FoutTheSportsUp.com. You can read my stuff at CLSMedia.com. And uh, until Friday, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for 
uh, giving us some questions tonight, and we will see you on Friday night.